in terms of what is being left out in parenting or in marriage, one of the main things for us is people are focusing on themselves. Nowadays, society encourages and it rewards narcissism. One of the first lessons that we had to start applying is it was not about me. Focus outwards instead of on myself. That would go for both parenting as well as relationships. A further one to have a, a foundation for us that lies in our faith. We take the teachings of the Bible very seriously. We're here with Herna and Hank Tenkate. They are a dynamic duel of co-authors. They're in a book with Pat Masidi called Inspired Miracles. And they have overcome numerous challenges in their lives, including parenting a child with diabetes. And Herna and Hank believe that relationships require structure and effective strategies to deal with both the good and bad times. So we're going to find out today about some inspiration, some faith, resilience, commitment, and so on. We have two life coaches here. So welcome to you both. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for having us. Thank you. You're very welcome. Us. Yes. Appreciate and so if someone asks both of you, what do you do? How are you similar? How are you different? What's the answer? We are very different. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. Yeah, it's, we do life together and we do marriage together. And we've done so for 30 plus years. But in terms of our day jobs, I know the quantity today and I work with her, but at the moment we are developing the whole program on assisting people through the marriage hiccups. And that should be released pretty soon. Wonderful. Yeah. I think our personalities are sort of not the same as well. So we had some challenges and the way that we sort of deal with differences or stress, that's, that's a huge challenge sometimes. And it's something that we had to learn to work through. And like you mentioned with our daughter with the diabetes, she was two years old and it's not something that comes announced or comes with a textbook of this is what you do. It's literally wake up every night at midnight to make sure that she's okay. But test her again early in the morning. So you have to adapt, but then in the meantime, still there's a partner on the other side of the relationship that needs to be taken care of. And we had, a, we have a son as well. So we had to face those challenges and make sure that we've came up with a recipe to deal with the challenges. Wonderful. It seems like when it seems, look, we all have problems and we all have to rise to the occasion when it comes to marriage, parenting, unexpected obstacles, especially medical ones. And it seems like there's two choices. There's you can let those obstacles divide you and drive you apart and you can bicker and get broken up or you can both step up to the plate and you can both say okay we'll be a team and work together and that's what we all want right so we all want it in our families and our relationships and our marriages and so you say that you've been together for decades and you've overcome these challenges is there a number one secret or is the secret that there are no secrets or are there a series of secrets how do we tap in to some of what you figured out I think that they are serious just secrets. A couple of them would be number one, to make sure that you keep the other people in mind. And the moment that someone gets into the position of just taking care of themselves, they're going to lose the others. So I think that would be the first secret. The second is to know where you're they tell you your foundations are and know what they are so that you can fall back on it. Now, along with that is to explore the strengths and weaknesses of each. For instance, I can do with a bit less sleep than Adna does. And as a result, just the nightly checks for Lorenzo, our daughter, that came more natural to me. She could work from home and closer to home. I'd different hours 
So for me, it was easier as well. And we had to come to that agreement. But similarly, if one knows what your strengths and weaknesses are on both sides, to make sure that you still communicate and make or get the other person on board. So building a strategy around your strengths and weaknesses. And I hope that answers the question all. And if I can just add to that, Shink was really good with to calculate, you know, exactly how much she needs to eat during the night when she was sort of going to a hyper or on the way to a hyper. So um, he could do that. And sometimes I had to sort of phone him when he was at work just to ask him, you know, what I should do because of the circumstances. And there's no right or wrong. And every person is different, even with the diabetics. Um, so what worked for her doesn't necessarily work for somebody else. But we had a very, very nice mentor as well in form of another older person who had diabetes as well. And he could really share with us, you know, some really good secrets on what to do and, and when to test foods to give, foods not to give. Um, that was really good. And he offered, well, actually he had not a lot of sleep during the first at least 10 years. But it's the... The coping strategies to make sure that you don't lose one another in the relationship. That's what it all always came back to. The, it's how do you do it together as a team? I couldn't do it without her. So we just had to work around it. If I can just add one more thing, it was, I had not mentioned the, the mentor we had, but in terms of life, we also, we had to find mentors who could be role models, speak truths and life into our relationship. So that was very valuable as well. Wonderful. This is helpful. And it's, it's interesting to think about going in that there are these problems that you have and how important it is to be continuously re advising about your problems and uh, and figuring out these new coping strategies. And then also you mentioned about like searching for mentors and, and not just being stuck in your own box and driving each other crazy, but also finding uh, mentors outside of your marriage to give you advice and give you the, these tips. And so there's this thing people talk about sometimes like the love languages, right? And so it might be that like one person's love language is acts of service and one person's love language might be compliments and, or gifts or things like that. And so uh, it's just interesting to think about how you've been mentioning that you're both definitely not the same, you're, you're different. And so it takes some of this re-examining to figure out what the difference is and what the strengths are so that way you can each kind of fill the different roles. Like you, you said, Hank, you can get by on less sleep. So then maybe that's where you're better suited to then wake up and do those things that that need to be done. And you're making me think a lot about like my own marriage where sometimes with with our kid, I get him up in the morning and I put him to sleep at night. And then the wife does more of like the the cooking and the sending him off to school. And so that way it's not exactly like uh, uh, balancing the scales because that's kind of impossible to compare things. But you just say like people have their different roles and that it all works together. And so that's kind of things working. But then it's also kind of fun, but a little scary to talk about the conflicts or difficulties. So in your... In your uh, past few years, there's been this diabetes issue, but then have there ever been really problems in the marriage that you've overcome that you think we can learn from? I think there was this one situation um, when the children were still in primary school, we really had a fight. I didn't know what it was. Um, it probably wasn't really important because I can't remember, but it was a time when you would sit at, around at the dinner table. And I've asked my son if he could ask his dad to pass me the button. <laughs> so yes, we had some difficult times, but I think it's just the way that you deal with it and, and you grow as you're getting older. And it's at the end of the day, it's really how you react to stress and how you choose to, to react. I think that's, that's the main thing. Specific challenges, if I can mention. Two, at one stage, um, I had not worked away from home. So she had been away during the week, returning over weekends. 
And that put a lot of strain on our relationship, but also the fact that just shortly before I'd been made redundant at work and the business that I was going into with people did not work out well because for all the work done, we ended up getting maybe 10% of the money. So that put a huge strain on the relationship and just to make sure that we could communicate through it and work through it and not let the resentment and let's say that the natural distance it brings, just not allow it to overtake us. That's true. That's true. The other one was when we migrated from South Africa to Australia. Now, for the people who have done it, it's not like being a tourist in a different country because you suddenly arrive and you're, you're either invisible or non-existent because you don't have a support network, number one. Number two, you don't have an established identity in the country. They don't know you. You don't have a credit rating. You don't have the resources. So making sure that the home base is strong was very crucial to us. But yes, there were challenges in that regard as well, especially not having our parents near, that was a huge strain. And furthermore to that, how to deal with the challenges the children were facing. So we had to focus on issues outside of ourselves as well. That's, yeah. And the same, we discovered the same strategies that help us cope with the diabetic situation with our daughter when she was little, we could transfer that so we could use the same skills, fall back on the same strengths and weaknesses, fall back on the same strategies, all of those we could transfer from one situation to the next. And we trust that's what we can offer other people. I like that a lot. You, you think about your own personal journey. You think about the person you were when you were younger. And through the difficulties, through the stress, you develop these sort of transferable skills, right? It's sort of like when you have a career, you have a job, and then you go to other careers and jobs. And even though they might be completely different, you still learn things like project management or time management or interpersonal relationships. And it seems like in your marriage and in your parenting, it's a similar idea that you figure out how to logically solve problems and have a strategy and have a plan and have a timetable and figure out who was what roles and know how to overcome the unexpected obstacles and it just reapplies later on. And so as far as you and the, the risks that you've taken, right? You you say that you you've moved countries and you've done all these different things. Uh you know, people out there are are married and their parents and they all have these similar stress and similar obstacles. And a lot of people, either they, they give up or they, or they fail or they quit too soon, uh, but you have figured out a few things. So do you think, is there anything with marriage or parenting that is not being focused on enough with people or is not being discussed enough that you think that you two uniquely stand out in? Anything come to mind? You might have seen in the, the writing that we have in the Inspired Miracles book, there were issues that we had to identify for ourselves. So in terms of what has been left out in parenting or in marriage, one of the main things for us is people are focusing on themselves. Nowadays, society encourages and it rewards narcissism. And one of the first lessons that we had to start applying is it was not about me. So focus outwards instead of on myself. And that would go for both parenting as well as relationships. A further one, which I think is being disregarded now is to have a, a foundation for us that lies in our faith. And we take the teachings of the Bible very seriously. And it's not just 
a religious book. There are life lessons in it that as soon as we started discovering how to apply them, it just made so much sense that in real life, that makes our faith practical. And that is something that we can also offer. But then again, the, there's an old saying, God's truth is universal or in modern day times, people would say all truth is God's truth. And yes, those lessons that we've learned there also from mentors, from our homes were growing up, but our parents on both sides were dedicated Christians. So that is what we can offer anybody because those life lessons are invaluable. Yes. And, um, both my parents came from broken homes and they sort of made a promise to each other that they would never ever let their children go through the same experience that they've experienced. So that really made an impact on me. And I think from the start, we've, we've decided that we would go the extra mile. We will never give up on each other. Um, we have to work on our marriage. Marriage is not something that you just do once and just let it go. It's like, if you, you can't stand still, you have to move forward. It's like a steep uphill. So if you stand still, you just go backwards. So that's, that's something that you have to work on every, every day. And I think to foster forgiveness and to respect each other, that's a great thing in the marriage. It is. And of course, Hank's my best friend, <laughs> which is good because, um, I can, I can discuss anything and everything with him. That's good. Thank you. It was a situation that I think annoyed her a bit when we started dating. To me, she was my best friend already, but she didn't like to hear that. She wanted to be more, I think. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. And it's, if I can just circle back to your previous question, things that people often miss out in relationships or parenting now is it's not something that you can do on APRO and if you don't like it, return it to the store. You're in it and the, that's why you have to be very certain from the get go. But when you're in it also to consider that whatever you do has a, a reach far outside of yourself. It touches upon children later on. It definitely touches upon the partner, but then again, there's the extended family and the fact that you might be a role model and that you can negatively influence someone else. It's also something to consider. So for us, that had been very real coming out of teaching, teaching and training for so long, I could see how positive role models could, in, could influence people to, to find a way and not give up too easily. So. Uh, I hope that makes the things. It does. It's very powerful that where everyone is watching from extended family and friends and kids, and it's for, it's probably far easier to be a negative role model than a positive one. And it's far easier to let the, the baser instincts win. And the, it seems like the the more difficult but more rewarding path is to always try your best and be a good person and put in this work every day. And you're mentioning some of these things about communicating and of doing your best to be selfless and consider the other person. And then also keep your faith in mind, whatever that means. And not just on a superficial level, like many people do, where they might just go to church and go through the motions, right? They might just memorize the Bible verses, but you're saying to also apply what you know and just, and even though it's, it's really hard and it may, might take a lot of the energy out of you, it's worth it because of these long-term results and of happy, having a, just a happy family life and of setting a good example for other people. So this is all, these are all things that we might have heard before, but maybe we haven't heard in years or decades, or, or we heard things and maybe disregarded them and, and stopped listening. But maybe it's time to start listening again to the, these simple and foundational ideas. And so that way we can have this kind of bright future and choose the right partner and stay with the right partner and 
and keep in mind that we get what we give and so give our best to the marriage. That way we can kind of, everybody wins. And so as far as what you two have going on with your with your marriage, with your family, with your business, with your careers, what is happening in the near future? What are you looking forward to? Number one, we look forward to launch the, the program, the coaching and mentoring program for marriages and relationships. And further to that, I'm looking forward to spending more time with that. Yes. That's precious. Time is precious and, and spending time with, with my better half and my family. That's, that's what I'm looking for as well. And to invest in other people, to tell them how to, they can overcome or how they can have like a better marriage or have better relationships with their children or with people at work. That's, that's a win-win, I think, at the end of the day. If I can add on something. For the things that we want for the future, you only have to make the decision once. If you figured out what you want, once that is established, it's figuring out how to get there. So then it's the day to day milestones to be achieved, to get, bring you closer to your goal. And the goals don't need to be static. But years ago, there was a book who moved my cheese. But it was all about who moved the goalposts, all who stole your dream. And so often we lose sight of it. We lose our dream. And as a result, we lose the value. So for us, the number one thing is for me to have her by my side and to go explore new things because as, the, as you take one step in line, it opens doors or it just leads you to the next stepping stone, something new to explore, something new to experience, but to have her on, on my side, to know that we can tackle things together. That's really encouraging. That's it's true. empowering. <clears throat> and if you would like to do something, the best is to start immediately, to act immediately, uh, because if you don't, then there will always be excuses why you don't or reasons why you couldn't. So um, I think one should just focus on that. For example, Adna is the one who will, I think, take more risks, will try something new more easily. Yeah. But for me, it's, I might be a bit more cautious initially. But then again, to sustain the momentum once we've started with something, I think that is something that I find more natural. So again, it's how we can complement one another to sustain our efforts and also to achieve our goals together. Yes, I think that's, that's great. You were right that this is empowering and encouraging that the the differences that you have if they fit together right are complementary and when you say like one person might be more impulsive or more risk taker the other person might be more conservative but then the more conservative person might also keep the the plan on track as you're going so it's not necessarily one extreme or the other and so you're saying that what's important is to have this self-awareness that we spoke about a few minutes ago and to take that inventory and to have the shared goal and both people be on board with the plan, but then also don't let time talk you out of things because it's so easy to have a goal, have a dream and not take action. Next thing you know, years pass and it turns out you weren't taking the goal seriously. So you're saying whatever the, the goal is, whether it's moving to some new country or embarking on a new career or building a business or just taking the, the time out for each other and, and going on, on the dates and keeping the marriage going, just take that first step, whatever it is. And so do, is, it, is it possible for you to maybe assign homework to, to me personally, but also to the people listening. If someone out there says, okay, my, my marriage is it, good, but it could be better. And is there anything that comes to mind as far as like practical uh, 
like tasks that that we can do. Like they say those things like don't go to bed angry or take time out to tell your partner that you love them. Does anything come to mind as far as a, a practical, doable homework assignment for the rest of us? I think for me it would be, I wouldn't really say love languages, but sometimes I would, or oh, not sometimes, I would appreciate it if Ink helps with the daily home chores because I can't get to everything. And he's really good with that. He's really good with cooking. Whereas um, I can rather sit at the table and wash the dishes, but he doesn't mind to do that. And um, I, don't, I don't mind to do the dishes, but um, I think it's really to communicate. I think that's the most important thing. And to communicate on a daily level, see where you can add value to each other and assist each other. I want to latch onto that. So adding value is how do you build up your better heart? And again, focusing outwards, not on yourself, but along with it, a daily reflection on what did I achieve, but keeping the goal in mind, thinking ahead, what can I do tomorrow so that I don't stay in the same place? The the local people in the area where we grew up in South Africa, they're the saying, basically going like this, you find me here and you leave me here. And what it harps on is if you are a person who's going places and you have goals in life and you're moving forward, you might find me in one place, but tomorrow when you move on, and you've got your next new challenge and new achievements, I might still be stuck in the same place. So in reality, it's a really sad reflection on life for many people who had lost the goal, lost the dream, but taking those small steps in terms of homework that you asked about, a small step every day that brings you closer and making sure that yesterday's business, if it's bad, you learn from it. If it's good, you're encouraged by it and motivated by it. Uh, I can add to that as well. It's not only women who appreciate compliments. I think it's good to compliment your partner on things that he or she is good at or does good. Um, like in the sense of if he if does a mowing, okay, I can do it as well. But I would tell him, listen, I really love the way that you mow the lawn or just, just to compliment him, but it must be an honest compliment, not overdone or understated. And keeping a further homework to you. I'm not a person who likes people too close around me, but Hatna does like the physical touch. So for he, for her, it's an assurance, not only proximity wise, but also a physical connection. So holding a hand also, I had to learn to do that because it didn't come naturally. Now it is so ingrained because of building a good habit. And that's what it, where I'm leading with this is to make sure that we build habits that will sustain our efforts. That the, all the good habits that will lead you along the path of success, let's say, good habits in communicating with your partner, good habits in decision-making, good habits in financial management for the family. So those are the things that we have to work on. And it's almost like what I said before about you only need to make a decision once. Thereafter, it's the execution, the how to do it. And, and the good thing is as well that people can change. I mean, you're... You're not exactly the same as when you meet your other half or your partner, whatever. Um, people can grow and that's the most important thing. And you have to sort of invest a lot of time in personal growth as well. Um, probably more than time that you spent on the job. So that's the only way to move forward, I think. Yeah. I agree that this is some very deep thinking. You think about if you ever find a video or a photo or a piece of writing of yourself from 20 years ago 
you don't even recognize it. You don't even recognize yourself. And then if you meet up with that friend from 30 years ago, then you realize at some point you you really diverged paths. But then if you have your partner that you've been with for 20, 30 years, the, the ideal situation is you grow together and that requires this constant daily communicating and the empathy that you're mentioning of saying, well, there's, there's what, what I like and what I don't like, but then my partner has a whole other set of things. So it's kind of a, a daily process to understand what it is that they want and give them just a little more of what they want every day. And, uh, and, and you know, Hank and I and, and us men, we know a secret that, that all men know and that, that no women know, which is that if you compliment a man, he'll get, that's the only compliment he's going to get for the next 10 years. And women are complimented all the time. You call on a man one time, he'll be thinking about that compliment you said for months, years on it. And no woman knows this, but not now you do, Hernan. That's a secret between Hank and me, just that some of these things are for men and women are just very rarities. So we think about, well, what what's rare and what can we do to uh, just make them feel better and make us, us both feel better? And so there's just so much for us to think about and so much for us to do. And I love how it seems like the solution is this term that you mentioned here, habits. Because when you think of habits, you think of, well, maybe I, I've been going along on a path and my, my thinking and my actions have gotten me this far. But if I'm not completely satisfied, it's time to do something a little uncomfortable and consciously apply new micro actions to change the path. And it might take a while to change the path. But once I do, that becomes the new normal and the muscle is built. And then that way, it's a gradual change. And like you mentioned about money habits or relationship habits or fitness habits, the idea there is small daily incremental progress. That way you just, you get there uh, eventually and you get there in a way that is sustainable and you don't backslide into previous bad habits. And then, and that way it's kind of a slow and steady situation. And so this is wonderful to think about. And I, I imagine that the average person out there is not aware of their goals, doesn't have goals, and is not actively working on their marriage. And we can all learn from what it is that you two have accomplished. So if someone out there says, this sounds like something that I want to pursue, I want to have a better marriage, I want to communicate with my partner, I want us both to be happier, and they want to investigate both of you and, and your business and this course that you have. So what is the next step? What is the call to action? Where does someone go to find out more? The website will soon be up, so we'll soon, soon start advertising, and it will just be hdmcarted.com that they would be able to find us at. And following them on that, there will be in future some more programs on mindsets and personal developments and developing your dreams or recapturing your dream. And we want to apply the same strategy as it's been working for us. Uh, and the way I explained it to school students had been how to eat an elephant. One bite at a time. One bite at a time. Absolutely. And once you've learned that lesson to know that, yes, I've been able to digest yesterday's bite and I can take another one today. For us too, that is part of the strategy. First one is getting to launch some and marriage coaching and then build onto that, investing into other people and allowing them the freedom eventually of, the freedom and security of stable relationships. And sometimes you have to reevaluate. If I can just take it back to our daughter, for an example, uh, we found that every time when we went on holidays, the shipping levels would just go up sky high, 25, whatever. And then after two or three times, we saw, you know, that there's a certain, um, say rhythm. Every time when we go on holiday, every time when she was excited, the sugar levels would go up. Every time when there was like a test at school, the sugar levels would go up. And after we've recognized, you know, the patterns, we could do something about that. So, so um, that's good to reevaluate and keep track of, of differences and how you can improve on that. Yeah. And for us for the near future, reevaluating what we're doing now and, uh, 
part of our dream is to gradually move away from day jobs and by investing in other people and in other opportunities, move on to new challenges. So that is stretching us a bit. It's a severe growth curve we're going through as well. But developing a program or so, that's more natural to me. The day-to-day -day work that Anna does, the going into the absolute de details in her work as a quantity surveyor, that's also been a stretch for her, I think, because she's learning how to deal with a lot more uncertainties and fly by the seat of the pants with new situations in coaching and mentoring that comes up because now it's again, it's not a defined or set parameter that she's working with because people come with their own issues and we have to help them deal with that. And that challenge is also very rewarding. So that is something else we are looking for, uh, forward to in the near future, much more. And I think one is never too old to learn. So that's something that's really important as well. You know, that you can learn different habits, you can improve, you can make your life better. That's good. I so love we're it. Also the new habits now. <laughs> yes. And it, and it seems like the, the, Problems just keep coming, but problems are good because problems mean growth and they mean opportunities and challenges. As long as you don't give in to those excuses, the excuses like, well, I I'm this age or I'm from this country or I started off in this situation. It's like you could let the excuses win or you could say, well, I, I, I could wish it was easier, but instead I wish that I was better. And so the next logical step, the place to go, the website is H. T E N C A T E dot com. And we're, we've been speaking with Herna and Hank. And so, as we're wrapping up our conversation here, it's always fun to kind of end by thinking about our favorite quote or lesson or moral. So, do you each have like a, a favorite quote or lesson along those lines? Yes, I have one. Um, if, if you would like to go further in life, you have to learn every day. Um, I've heard a saying that says, you can't learn to drive in a parked car. So if you don't do anything, you're no, not going anywhere. So I think that's a good one. So for me, especially for the culture of the, of the day, just the short saying, it's not about you. And if not now, when? When are you going to do something about it? These are all helpful. These are all things that we can think about and should think about to get out of our own way and get out of the rut and just push forward, do what needs to be accomplished. Let's go now to H-T-E-N-C-A-T-E.com. Herna and Hank, glad to speak with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. For Thanks for your time, Robert. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Appreciate that.